lab section two here. Today we're going to be talking about Onychophora, a fairly unknown species been around for almost 500 million years, with some of the oldest fossils being found in China, reaching back as far as 500 million years ago. Most of us in America are not fam familiar with Onychophora because they live in the forest regions of South America, Africa, the Caribbean, and Oceania. Although most Onychophoran species are terrestrial, some of them have been shown to be aquatic at some point because of the fossil records. Our group chose to study Onychophora, which is derived from the ancient Greek words onyx, meaning claws, and pharon, to carry. Onychophorans are nocturnal and photonegative, and they live in dark, moist microhabitats like forest litter and soil. Some even live in caves or drier woodlands and grasslands. Here we have the 16S phylogenetic tree, which is the most accurate because it is based on the genetic sequence of each species. According to this tree, phylum Anicophora is most related to phylum Echinodermata and phylum Chordata. This is the morphological phylogenetic tree, which is not as accurate because it is based on morphological characteristics from a data matrix instead of genetics. This tree shows phylum Onychophora as being most related to phylum Anthropoda because they are sister taxa. This is a published phylogenetic tree from 2006 article. It indicates that Onychophora is in a sister group with Calicerata. They share a common ancestor with Chylopida and Tetraconata. According to the phylogenetic tree of life, Onychophora is in the group Bilateria, in a sister group to Arthropoda and has Nematoda as a common ancestor. Therefore, our group hypothesizes that Onychophora originated from aquatic nematoda based on fossil records. The morphological tree generated in lab looks different than this published tree because the published tree focused on neuroanatomy, whereas our tree used different traits such as locomotion, appendages, and 13 other ones. Onychophora are known as velvet worms due to their velvety texture and worm-like physical appearance. It falls under the genus Peripatus and is a phylum that consists of elongated, soft-bodied, many-legged panerothopods. There are two extant families of velvet worms, which are the Peripatidae and Peripatopsidae. These two families differ in their number of legs, as the Peripatidae generally have more legs. Peripatidae live in more tropical locations, while Peripatopsidae live in more temperate locations below the equator. Velvet worms are protosomes, meaning the mouth forms first. They are triploblastic and bilaterally symmetric. Velvet worms grow by molting, meaning that they shed their exoskeleton layer. They typically live up to six years. The velvet worms are segmented and have flattened cylindrical bodies that have cross sections and unstructured body appendages known as oncopods that can grow up to 20 centimeters. They have changes in hydrostatic pressure that create waves when the body is contracted. It's similar to a caterpillar and how it moves very slowly. All velvet worms reproduce sexually, besides Epiparapatus and Therni. Some species drop their spermatophores into the female genital opening, while others use spikes, spines, or pits to hold the sperm to transfer to the female. Other times, the sperm can break down her skin so it passes through the body and migrates to the female's ovaries to fertilize. Females typically reproduce when they are at least 1.4 years of age. Onychophorans have separate sexes and fertilization occurs both internally and externally depending on species. Onychophorans usually exhibit sexual dimorphism, that is, males and females are not the same size. As is most often the case in animals that are sexually dimorphic, the female is larger than the male. This may seem counterintuitive because most sexually dimorphic mammals, including ourselves, have larger males than females. This is a good example of how lack of familiarity with the little things can skew one's perception of the natural world. Excuse me. That sounds cool, but what makes Anika Flora so special? Hi, I heard you on a unique fact about Anika Flora. Well, that can only be explained through song. Anika Flora, Anika Flora, carnivorous. Yes, they are. They will eat small insects, isopods, termites, and mollusks to look out. Here comes Onychophora. Onychophora, Onychophora. They catch their prey with adhesive slime, squirting up to 30 times. 
times.